Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel today. And welcome back to our ERJ-170-175 pilot series today. For anyone new to the series that may have an interest in this aircraft today, uh, I highly recommend you check out last week's episode linked in the description below. Uh, to recap, last week on episode 1 we covered some basic definitions, uh, the interior flight deck inspection, electrical power up, and then finished off with the exterior pre-flight inspection, and we are going to continue it from the exterior pre-flight inspection today. With all that said, welcome to episode 2 this week. This episode is going to cover the originating receiving flow and checklist, uh, which we'll explain in a moment, and the purpose of a crew briefing today. Now, it might not sound like much in this episode, but after we discuss and show the captain and first officer flows during the originating receiving checklist, it's going to add up quickly here. So, to continue from last week, we're still in Chicago here, here at Lima 20 with about an hour to go now until departure time. We've just loaded up our release from dispatch and we're going to go ahead and look over it to help with our crew brief now. A crew brief now is required for all originating flights and flights where there is a crew change, and that's because we all want us on the same page. It's the captain's job to ensure that the first officer and flight attendants have been briefed before the flight. Like I said, a crew briefing is meant to help put everyone on the same page, and it's usually conducted in a location where the passengers are unable to hear. So, uh, behind the gate boarding area, like the jet bridge, or in an empty plane even. Within that crew briefing, we're discussing several factors, like our uh, image, you know, if we're dressed professionally and we have all of our required documents, our manuals are up to date, uh, the safety word for the day, or trip, Aircraft status, if it's a good plane or if it might have any restrictions on it. Flight conditions, such as weather, uh, like we just talked about. Uh, cabin service, is it anything different? Are they not doing a drink service or food service? Uh, time in route or delays. And any, again, armed personnel on board or maybe security concerns of other passengers. And then to finish it up, we let the flight attendants know if they see anything uh, that they don't like to alert us up front right away and then ask if they have any questions as well. So for today's flight, it's gonna be planned that the weather's all calm, there's no specials, there's nothing wrong with the plane. It's just gonna be a, a simple flight from Chicago all the way down to Houston. So now that we've completed the crew briefing today, we can head back up to the flight deck and begin our originating receiving flows to properly configure our airplane for a, a successful engine start. An originating receiving flow and checklist is done for the first flight of the day uh, changing crew member if the aircraft is left unattended or if maintenance has been performed on it. And that's solely because we want to make sure that every switch and knob is in the proper position before that flight begins. Now, back on episode one, we talked about how captains and first officers have certain flows they must do. Well, this is going to be the first one that they do. So, we're going to take a look at the captains first today and go over that one. So, I'd like to note that flows don't have to be done in this exact order, but it's done this way as it makes the most sense logically with the path to make sure every switch and knob is being in the right spot. As you can see now on the screen, I've overlaid the flight deck with a visual path uh, that we'll take to make sure everything is in the correct position and what exactly we are looking for here. So, to begin with the captain's flow here, First thing we're going to want to look at is our MCDU here and that it's set up properly. We're going to want to verify that its nav database is up to date here and that the date and time all match. Then we're going to look up here at the DVDR control panel here and go ahead and give that a test as well. And that's done by pushing this button in for about a second or two, verifying that a green light comes up and then that no messages on our ICAS uh, enunciates here. And we're going to come on down to the electric AC power panel portion here. And we're going to go ahead and set this all up now. So our IDG1 and 2 selector is going to be set to auto. Our GPU is still going to be set as pushed in because we're using the GPU currently. Which is why it's saying that in use light. And then we're going to verify that our AC bus ties selector is set to auto with our generator. APU generator still in from the uh, pre-flight. Now we're going to move to our electric DC power portion here and set that up. So we're going to want to make our true 1, our true essential, and true 2 switches are all set to auto. With our battery 1 selector still set to on, 
and then our DC bus ties set to auto and our battery 2 selector still set to auto. Now we're going to go here to the cockpit lights panel portion and we're going to check that the uh, enunciator test button is going to be pushed in here and then we want to make sure that all of our lights come on as required and then we want to check that our dome light is also functional as well. Looking down now at the fuel panel here we're going to verify this by making sure that our cross feed selector is set to off, our DC pump selector, our AC pump 1 and AC pump 2 selector are all set to auto. The passenger signs portion now here is we're going to make sure that our emergency light selector is turned on and then we're going to ensure that the emergency light uh, not armed ICAST messages enunciate here. And then we're going to switch that back to the armed position. No electric devices, fasten belts, and sterile sign will all be switched to the off position. Now moving back to the fire extinguisher panel here. Since this was completed during the safety and power on, we no longer need to do this anymore. So we're going to just move on to the next portion of it. And now look at the APU control panel portion. Now the APU master is still going to be set to off because we're not running on APU yet. And then the APU emergency stop button is guarded here with that uh, red little cage around it so we don't accidentally push that button in. Looking at the windshield wiper 1 and 2 that will be set to off. Moving down to our lights now we're going to verify that our nav is set to on, our strobes are off, our red beacon is off, our logo is as required so if it's nighttime go ahead and turn it on. If it's daytime it's your discretion. Taxi uh, nose and side lights are off with our wing inspection lights set to off and then our landing lights are all off as well. Looking at the hydraulic panel now, system 1 engine pump shutoff will be guarded. Our power transfer unit selector will be set to auto still. And then our system 2 engine pump shutoff will also be guarded. And then we want system 1 and system 2 electric pumps set to auto. And system 3 electric pump A set to off with system 3 electric pump B set to auto here. Moving to the pressurization panel now to verify this all. We're going to set our cabin altitude selector to stop, our mode selector set to auto, the dump function will be guarded here with our landing field elevation selector set to stop as well. Moving up to the ice protection panel now, we're going to make sure that our windshield heating button is pushed in as long with our engine 1, our wing, and engine 2 buttons are pushed in as well. Our mode selector is going to be set to auto with our test selector set to off. Looking down now at the air conditioned pneumatic panel to set this up, we're going to set our cockpit knob to as required, so whatever temperature we may be feeling, it might be hotter, it might be colder, depending on the month. Our recirc fan is going to be pushed in here. The passenger cabin knob is going to be set to the flight attendant in the back, so that way they can control their own temperature. Our pack 1, our pack 2, our cross bleed, our bleed 1, our APU bleed and our bleed 2 buttons are all going to be pushed in. Looking at the passenger oxygen panel now to set this up, our mask deploy selector is going to be set to auto and we should see no mask deployed light. Looking at the standby compass, we want to cross check that its heading matches with the captain's and the first officer's HSI's on the PFD and MFD. Now due to some magnetic disturbance at the gate, it could be inaccurate. Um, but for the most part it should always match. Okay, we're finally done with the overhead panel now. And now we're going to move over to the guidance panel. So we're going to make sure that the altitude selector is in feet. Our speed is set to FMS mode. Our source is selected to whoever's going to be flying this leg. So we'll set it to the captain's side. Our barometric pressure is set for the current uh, pressure outside, which we'll get from the ATIS. And then our HSI is either set to compass or arc mode. Uh, I use compass, so we're going to set it to the compass mode. And then our bearings if you want them on or off. Looking at the glare shield light control panel now, this is as required, but for the most part during the day, uh, we're going to have the PFD, the ICAS, and the MFD on full bright mode to help with the sun glare and be able to see it. And then at night, we'll go ahead and dim them so it doesn't strain our eyes as much. So for right now, we're just going to keep them set to as bright as possibly can. Focusing our attention now on the reversionary panel, we're going to make sure that the display selector is set to auto 
and our ADS and IRS is in its normal position with no lights on. Making our way to the PFD now, just doing its basic attitude instrument check here. We're checking that the airspeed tape is not shown, uh, ADI is level and flag free, our altitude tape is within limits, our VSI is set to zero right now, and our HSI and compass have no flags and are displaying the same headings. Moving over to the MFD now, we're going to go ahead and check its hydraulic synoptic page and verify that its hydraulic fluid and quantity and pressure are all within their limits. Then we'll go ahead and switch back to our status page here and we're going to go ahead and check its oil quantities, the oxygen quantity. We're looking for a uh, green number right here to display that we have enough oxygen for three crew members up front and that's including the jump seater. If it was cyan, that would mean we have two crew members. If it was amber, that means the service has to be done to the uh, oxygen system to get back up to its normal parameters. Looking at the standby altimeter now, we want to confirm that its attitude is matching the PFD attitude indicators on both the captain and the first officer side. The altimeter is set and it matches the altitude on both the PFD on the captain side and the PFD on the first officer side as well. It has no altitude or speed flags displayed and its VSI is also indicating zero right now. Looking at the auto brake panel right here now, we're just going to go ahead and set that to off and then verify that the auto brake is not displayed on the ICAST. We will now focus our attention to the lower panel down here and we're going to go ahead and make sure that our ground prox terrain inhibit button is pushed out. Our emergency parking brake is on. Our ICAS is checked here. We want to make sure that there's no enunciators set. Our clock is set to the current time. Our landing gear lever is down. Our ELT is set to arm right now. Now we're going to look at the ground proximity glide slope inhibit button and make sure that that's pushed out. Our landing gear worn inhibit button is guarded. Our flight controls mode panel right down here. We're going to go ahead and make sure that our elevators, rudder, and spoilers are all in the guarded position. Our stall warning panel, our shaker 1 cutout and shaker 2 cutout is pushed out. Our power plant panel now, our start and stop 1 and start and stop 2 selector is set to stop and our ignition 1 and ignition 2 selector is set to auto. Now we'll look at the ICAST full button here and make sure that that is pushed out. Our speed brake lever is closed. Our thrust levers are idle, our wrap manual deploy is still stowed, and the cover is flush with the panel here. Our parking brake is on, and now the audio control panel here. Our mic button is set to the auto, our speaker uh, is selected for either comm here, and then our volume knob is selected to what you know we like most. If you, know, you want really loud or really quiet, it's all up to you. Now we'll look at the ground proximity flap override and then we'll make sure that that is guarded as well. And then our slap flap lever is zero. Now we'll go ahead and do our door. So normally this will be done on the first flight of the day with someone in the flight deck and by someone I mean the first officer or the captain. And what's going to happen is we'll go ahead and close the door. We'll press the test button on the cockpit door control panel, verify that the oral alert and the unlocked indication comes on. We'll go ahead and push in the lock button now and check that the electromechanical latch is with its, within its normal operation. And then we're going to go ahead and press the emergency button on the door control panel right outside the cockpit uh, and let it ding for about 30 seconds and then verify that the cockpit door will unlock. After the test is complete, then we'll go ahead and push the lock button to confirm the door is unlocked and reset the cockpit door control. Now we'll go ahead and look at our trim panel here. And we're going to make sure that system 1 and system 2 cutout buttons are both guarded here. And now we'll go ahead and do a trim check to verify that the roll, yaw, and pitch are all operational and it has its safety cutout here. Trim, 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 trim,
after we've completed our pitch trim test now, we're going to go ahead and check that our elevator and aileron disconnect handles are pushed in and not displaying any ICAST messages. So now we're going to go ahead and check out our O2 mask and interphone here. And by doing this, we're just going to go ahead and test that it works on 100% here and emergency by pushing the test button here and checking for the gold star and then that our speaker comes on and then we'll just reset it again and do it for the other one and then set it back to 100%. Last but not least then, we're going to go ahead and check that our flashlight is still displaying that steady red light and our circuit breaker panel, all those are closed and collared and then the EFB mount is installed. And obviously this model doesn't have an EFB mount, but we'll go ahead and pretend that it's right here on the window. Now, I know that was a lot of information thrown at you there for that flow, but if you noticed, every switch or button was already set in its normal position. Now, this is due to how the ERJ operates. For the most part, all switches will be in the 12 o'clock position with no white lights on any of the buttons, otherwise known as the quiet and dark concept. Now, the good news is, that this flow is the longest one of the series and we've just completed it, so congrats! Alright, so now that we've completed the Captain Originating Receiving Flow, let's go ahead and take a look at the First Officer Originating Flow here on the screen. The First Officer's Originating Receiving Flow, again, is going to start us on the MCDU here. And again, that we're going to verify its position database is all up to date here. And now we're going to go ahead and put in our originating airport to our destination airport, our flight number, and then go on to the next page and see if we have an alternate that we might have to insert. For today's flight, we don't have an alternate, so we do not need to put one in today. Now we'll jump over to the guidance panel right away, and the source is still going to be selected to the captain here since he'll be the one flying the flight. The speed is still on the FMS, our altitude selector is set to feet only, our barometric pressure is set to the current pressure out here. Our HSI is on the compass or the arc. And then the bearing is either on or off. Glare shield lights control panel is set to however you may feel. The reversionary panel is the same as before. Our display selector is set to auto with the ADS and IRS uh, being in its normal condition with no lights shown. The PFD, again, we're checking its airspeed tape. The... ADI, the altitude tape, the VSI, and then the HSI and compass again. And then once again on the MFD, we'll check our hydraulic synoptic page and then the status page again to make sure that its fluids and quantities are all within their normal range. We'll do our same normal trim check now for the FO side here. We're going to check that its elevator trim is working in both directions. We'll do the same thing for our audio control panel. We'll set that up to how we want it to be set up. And then the O2 and mask interphone check, we'll do the same thing that we did for the captain. We'll check 100% emergency. If we see the gold star and the speaker comes on, we'll reset it then back to its normal 100%. And then we'll end it again with the flashlight that its steady LED light is still on. Our circuit breaker panel, they're all closed and collared. The EFB mount is installed here. And now what's different about the originating and receiving flow for the first officer here is we come down to the alternate gear extension compartment and we just want to verify that the alternate gear extension lever is fully down and the electrical override switch is set to normal. If all of that checks out, then we have completed the first officer originating and receiving flow. So it's a lot shorter than the captain's flow here as you can tell and definitely not as much to worry about on the first officer side. But then, like I said again, the captain's side isn't too bad once you know what you're looking for and that usually every switch is in its normal position already. With the end of the originating receiving flow here now, the captain would go ahead and call for the checklist here to ensure that the items were completed properly. This checklist is what we call a do verify method here, which means whoever is reading it will say the entire line item and then the response will mirror what is said after verify on the checklist. So, an example would be for the person reading the checklist, they would say logbooks and manuals verified checked. The response action to that would be checked. And then the next line would go QRH verify installed, installed, and so on. 
Well, with the conclusion of the checklist, we're going to go ahead and wrap up episode 2 here now. I know I said we would do the MCDU in last week's video, but considering this video is now pushing 20 minutes, uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the programming in the MCDU for next week's episode uh, 3 here. To summarize though, we have now walked our way through arriving to a cold and dark airplane and doing the flight deck and exterior pre-flight inspection, along with the proper crew briefing and performing our first flow in this plane. So, stay tuned for next week as we will be programming the MCDU and understanding the release and how to brief one for the flight. Thanks for watching, and I hope this series so far has been beneficial to you in learning this plane a little more. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of the week, and I look forward to seeing you back for next week's episode.